Okay, so uh, I figured a good way to learn uh, blocks in WordPress would be to actually take some real live um, sample uh, codes or sites and try to reproduce um, what's already out there. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to copy some patterns from here and there or just to uh, use what tools you already have in the block editor, but things kind of end up pretty simple looking usually. Um, as opposed to if you have something already designed out, like how do you actually reproduce all this? So um, I figured a good idea would be uh, to use something like uh, Tailwind UI. So we use Tailwind UI in a lot of our static projects. Uh, this is the website. Uh, if we go here, you can see it has a bunch of collections of components categorized into different um, different types of uh, page components, whether it's for the application or if it's marketing related. Um, and I actually already started uh, doing this. And I started with under here, application UI, display uh, data display, stats. And you can see we have some pretty simple little widgets here. And so the question is, how do we reproduce this in WordPress as a copyable pattern? Um, because it's one thing to try to reproduce this with like a bunch of custom styles that exist in your theme. But if it exists in your theme, uh, style wise, um, it's, you're only going to be able to, uh, really have it display well in your particular theme and it won't be translatable to other people's themes. So, um, so we got to figure out how we can use the, more or less only native blocks in WordPress to reproduce these kind of layouts and uh, styles for these particular components. And at the end, um, if you stay tuned, I'll give you a little uh, hint uh, of how to really tune it in and get it looking exactly like it is in uh, Tailwind because uh, the Tailwind UI library is really, really is a nicely put together um, display of components here. So, uh, let's get started. Uh, if we go to my site here, blockpress.dev, I made a custom post type called patterns so that we can separate all these patterns and we're going to make these available to copy, uh, for your own sites. And like I said, they will be, um, they will adapt to any site regardless of the theme mostly, um, because we're going to use only the native blocks in WordPress to do this. And you see, I've already done two, um, and I've set up some categories here to reproduce the categories in Tailwind UI, which, by the way, that's a uh, paid um, a paid uh, product. Um, but I highly recommend it. Go over there and sign up because um, it gives you some really good and and quite to be honest, a lot of different components. You could create anything you want with that whether it's an application or just a simple website, uh, it gives you a great starting base of so you just copying code and kind of pasting it into your website. Um, but I'm just using this as an example of uh, how to reproduce things for, um, for blocks. So we reproduce the uh, structure hierarchy of the, of the uh, categories from Tailwind, and we're going to be working in the stats category. So I already have a couple here. This one's under stats. I, I should probably this one under stats too. So those were the first two. You can see here, there is some simple three column layout, simple text, and then a little more complicated with an icon and a view all. And then the, uh, and then the one we're going to do right now is this one where it's all glued together. Um, and, um, same kind of data, just a little bit uh, different. So if we go to the simple one, You'll see here, um, it's just, you know, groups, columns, titles. There's not a whole lot of layout, so it was pretty simple to do. The next one we're going to do, oops, is going to be uh, this with shared borders. So let's copy that and create a pattern. And... Let's just copy this information and we'll start with this one little block here and we'll be able to just copy it over once we're done with that. Um, so we don't have to 
reproduce from scratch uh, all of the styles here. So let's start by pasting it in. Great. We have something to work with. Um, and total subscribers. Okay, yeah, that's right. And the next thing we, we're going to want to do is this is uh, obviously a column block. And uh, we're going to also want to center it in our page. So uh, we're going to also group that so we can um, inherit the content width. So let's just make a, uh, we can make this into columns. Or actually, here, no. First thing we'll do is group it. It's always easier to select it here. Okay. So we'll group these just so it's a little easier to work with. I'm going to give it a quick background of uh, anything here. Let's say white, just so I can see what I'm working with a little better. And then uh, what I'll do is group this again. Yeah, well, I want to group this. And I'm going to do inherit default. Actually, I'm going to convert this here to wide width. OK. And then in here, we have a group. And I think I want to actually convert this to a column. So if I group this again, that's an easy way of just uh, where can I do this here? Change that into columns. Okay. Group. And we actually want three of these. Okay. And like I said before, in order to center this, we're going to have to group it again. Inherit the default layout. That should be good. And then if we do wide width, <clears throat> it should work. Oh, actually, I don't think we need that. Hang on. Yeah, we can do it straight from here. OK see what we're working with. So we have this group. Uh, we kind of nested it way too much here, but we'll take care of that later. Um, let's get rid of this. And uh, we'll start by, so this is going to be on one line. It could just be a regular, we could actually make this maybe a heading. Okay. So convert this to a heading. Make me H3 would be appropriate. And it's quite small. And uh, it's a little bit bold. And then, yeah, it's the default color here. So it's I think it's just that dark color. The color scheme, we're going to actually keep it to whatever's available in our color palette um, so that it'll just adapt naturally. And we won't have to define particular colors in each theme. Um, so we won't use the exact same colors, but it'll be more or less the same sort of palette that we're going to be using. So instead of purple in our theme, it's blue. And in another theme, you'll have a different palette that it'll adjust to. And then here we see we have this uh, row um, where everything's um, kind of stacked side by side instead. So how are we going to do that? Well, first we'll make these into our own blocks. And we'll make this into, say, some large, larger text here. And this is definitely small. And then this, let's see, it has this arrow. So we can, we can use an icon, which would be fine, but um, not super portable because, you know, we have to paste it in as an SVG and, you know, whatever. It's a little more complicated. It has to be just for uh, an arrow. So for simple things like this, I kind of cheat. And I just grab the UTF version of this. It's close enough. And I don't think anybody will complain. There we go. 
and then it's this little pill shape. So we can uh, we can deal with that right now. So best way to do that is to group it. Whenever you group something, you more or less make it into a, uh, it's like a wrapping in a div. And we're gonna have this light green background. And it's this darker text. Um, yeah, we'll stick with, we'll probably stick with this for now. And um, let's see, smaller. Padding is going to be pretty minimal. We can check what we have here. So we can really get it exactly as it is. Um, so they have one point uh, one two five REM. So we can try and reproduce that. Uh, where is it here? Change this to REM. Zero point one two five. Point one two five. Cool. And then the radius, uh, we're going to make it just a super large number. So something like 99, that'll give it that pill shape. Um, and it's block level right now, but uh, we could probably, and you know what, this is a little too glued here. So I'm actually going to um, unlink this. And then top, bottom, or left, right, I'm going to increase this to, say, maybe 5. Yeah, so we bring it in a bit. Okay, cool. And, yeah, so once we kind of make this into a row... The block row in WordPress is, in effect, just a flex um, style. Uh, and so things will be aligned in the flex direction row. And that'll make it uh, you know, not so full width. So it might just behave properly once we group this together as, uh, as a row. So that's going to be everything up until here. And I wonder if I can convert it. No, not really. So what we'll do is insert after this a row, and we're just going to drag things in. Cool. I don't know why this. Yeah, OK, here we go. Uh, this is inside. This is inside. OK, let's reorder it a little bit. OK, that's looking good. Uh, these are switched. OK. And uh, let's see how we can align this. Um, in fact, probably the best way to do this is to group these two together. And then in the row, we can do space between. Uh, space between items. Good. And in fact, this shouldn't be a group. This should also be a row, so they're side by side. I wish there was a way to convert directly to a row. Um, I'll just have to drag it in. So insert before row. And then drag this in. Move this group. OK, now we got something looking good. Uh, obviously, there's a space here, and it's not so big in the uh, example. So uh, what we can do there, that's that's the block spacing being applied. So if we go into here and just hit 0, yeah, that's a little too much. Um, so maybe we can do something like 0.125. That looks decent. Maybe 2.5. Cool. And it's all centered out, so uh, we're going to align bottom. Let's see, that's a little too much on the bottom. Uh, yeah, we can, we can play around with that a little later. Um, okay, so this is looking better. 
we have this a lot of spacing in this row let me see something yeah so let's again just kind of remove the block spacing it's getting in the way a bit even better okay and so we have this kind of no margin in between um let's first just color this block up so it's starting to look a little better use this primary color this might be a little too light but yeah it definitely will be um we'll keep it like this and now let's see Yeah, this row we also want to align bottom. And I'm wondering if I have a little, yeah, there's like some spacing on here, I think. Where's that coming from? Hmm. Let's deal with that a little later. Uh, what I want to show uh, definitely is, well, first of all, we have these borders in between. Um, and if we look at the container, you'll see we have this shadow here. Let me get rid of the styles. And you'll see it has a box shadow. Now, one thing to note, WordPress uh, native blocks don't really have a shadow control. So uh, we're going to have to like fake it a little bit. And then at the end, I'll show you how we can just actually add in the shadow and cheat. Um, but for now, what we can do is just add a thin one pixel border that could be a replacement for that shadow. So again, it's not we're not going to be able to reproduce things exactly the same as it is in Tailwind with the block editor. But the aim is just to get as close as possible within the native blocks, and then we'll see what we can do later to tweak it and get it even closer. But we wanna first start with uh, some borders here. So you can see here, we add in a border, even this darker border. I'm gonna use this darker border for now so it shows a little bit more. Um, and then we can, we have a useless group here, so let me drag this out. It should still be the same, that's good. Um, and then remove this and we still have a group again I did a bunch of group in for no reason I guess okay so that looks good let me and you know what now that it's under that column that could be our group we don't need this uh, group because we can style the column directly and it's actually better this way because since it's flexed um, we're gonna have problems with the height um, if we have an internal div or group inside of our column it's not gonna expand to be the full height so it's actually better if we do this directly on the column and apply our styles there so we're gonna do this uh, that's fine uh, we're gonna give it some padding because default by default doesn't have padding at this point, we could check how much the padding value is. Uh, 1.5 REM. Okay, that might be a little much, but... Cool. And let's add in that border again. Column settings. Okay, we might not be able to do that. Okay. So the column doesn't have a border setting. That's too bad. Um, okay, we'll, we'll just roll with it for now. We have to do the same thing with the block spacing. So I did see the option here. We'll do zero. That's better. Okay. And um, let's just copy this over cool and now because it's in this columns block it's got some default margin that we can just get rid of 
or maybe is it block space? I think it's block spacing. Here, let me delete this value. There we go. Okay, but it doesn't have the border. Here's the border. So the border is actually on the column setting. So I wonder if this is going to work. It's just the outside. Okay. Hmm. Well. If we group this. I mean, right now they're all on the, they're all, it's all like the same content, so it's not really, you know, it's all going to line up because it's the same height because it's the same content. Um, so we could probably get away with grouping it and using our border on that. Uh, let me just make sure there's not a setting here. No, typography. No. Okay. If we group it, we will add our border. We're going to have to kind of go back on what we did a bit and add padding inside of our group. Okay. And uh, let's see, let's get rid of some of this. Yeah, we do want zero block spacing. Um, we don't want a border. And we don't want any background here. We want this to be on our group. And I think we still have some padding. Yes, we do. Okay. Back to normal. And then um, this whole thing we can just copy over. There we go. Okay, and we have this little, you know, doubling up of our border here. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, if I do, let's see, block spacing. What if I did minus one pixel? No, it doesn't accept negative values. Okay. What about in the group? So block spacing, let me just see what this does. No, I can't put negative values in here. That's a bummer. Um, what else can we do to fix that? Um, yeah, there's not, there's not a whole lot, I think. I show, I'll show you how we can maybe do that later on. Okay. And then um, here we can... Uh, Make this our red color. And you're going to want to make this, oops, no. Red, text, white. How do they do it here? Yeah, they have this uh, muted red. Or this darker red color. Okay. Um, pretty close. Uh, we can start updating some of this data here. So it's not all the same. Cool. Oh yeah, we still have that spacing here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, on all of them. Okay. Save this just to make sure. Okay. Um, 
Let's get a down arrow somewhere. And this is 24%. I'm not going to do it all in detail here. It's just to give you an idea that it still displays decent uh, with some different information. Okay, where to go from here? Um, I'm not super stoked that we can't get it a little more closer here. Um, what we can do, there's definitely these round borders. So let's see if we can address that at least. So that's going to be on our, con on our container. We do have a border radius, and if I'm not mistaken, it's 0 0.5 REMs. Okay, that didn't do anything. Um, probably because there's a overflow issue. It's not, it's not clipping this outer container. So um, what we can do is actually on the inner one here. This is where our background and our border is. So on this, we can unlink this and then put it directly on here. So 0 0.5 should be top left. That's right. Then we go around the circle. And uh, I think this is, yeah, that's the right one. Oh, but it's the wrong value. Okay, and then our last one, we're going to do the same thing and just remove it here. Wait, no, it should be the opposite. Okay, hang on. Uh, where am I? It's these ones we want to remove. Okay, getting there. Um, what else? Let's see if we can straighten this out. Is this a line bottom? It is. And yeah, so I wonder where this extra spacing is coming from. Like it's inside of this. It's probably like a line height issue. So let's see in our typography if we have any anything here. Line height. Ooh. Okay, interesting. I didn't mean to change the size, but I think that's what we wanted. So I want to show the line height, and then that's one. That's what we want. Okay, a little closer. And then we'll we'll adjust the uh, block spacing for this margin in between the uh, kind of subtitle above the number. So let's do the same thing here. Line height, fix it to one. And I'll get the alignment going. Same thing here. Again, you should really just do one to completion so you don't have to you know, do it uh, on each block three times. Um, I just kind of jumped the gun a bit. Okay, cool. And then uh, on these groups, we're going to add back a little bit of spacing, say, um, let's just say 10 pixels. That seems about right. 10 pixels. 10 pixels and 10 pixels cool that looks good again the little the doubling up of the border is bothering me um, we can't do negative margins that would have fixed it and what else can we do oh we could just not put a border on this middle one uh, a little tedious. I don't like doing things so particularly like this, but 
if we want to get it close, that's how it's done. So where's our border? Border's here. Can we do it just on one side? Ah, it's, no, it's a border all around. Shoot. So what if we took this off completely? Uh, that's too bad. Yeah, so these are the limitations of the block editor at this point. It's, you know, the block editor is really trying to reproduce, it's basically adding controls for CSS, um, it's abstracting CSS into these block controls. Um, there's just so much CSS out there. Uh, I can't blame WordPress for not having a control for every little thing, um, but it's getting there and I'm sure they'll add more. So I guess it's a good, good time at this point to explain uh, how we can fill the gap here. So at this point, we have something that can be copy pasted at a, as a pattern into any theme and it's gonna display decently well. Let's check out the front end first. Cool. And, uh, you know, kind of not so bad responsive. Uh, that's the other thing is there's not really any responsive controls on, um, on our blocks at this point. Uh, so, you know, that's why you don't see a lot of patterns with particularities like rounded borders because you have to change them on different resolutions and we don't really have controls for that. But let me show you how we can do uh, and go the extra mile here so let me get out of this and we have our own plugin we made called tail press so tail coming from uh tailwind so obviously tailwind uh, if you're not familiar it's uh, aside from the actual ui they have available that's built off of tailwind css which is more or less a CSS framework that gives you a bunch of utility classes you can use in your code and you can just kind of sprinkle them in and do some extra stuff without having to write um, pure CSS uh, in your theme. Because we kind of want to stay out of our theme as much as possible here in developing because it's just it's more time consuming to have to write uh, out particular styles and instantiate uh, or, or enqueue style sheets in our theme for every little block when in reality we only need a little bit of utility classes to make things look pretty good so what this does is it'll add tailwind to your project and you can just use classes straight out of the box um, there's no uh, production issues uh, uh, that slow down your site, you know, because the classes do get generated dynamically, but on your front end, they're going to get gen get generated, but then they'll be cached uh, and you won't have to worry about uh, the CSS kind of compiling on the fly. Um, so uh, it's the best of both worlds. So let's go back here and you'll see what I mean. So if I go to this shared uh, borders, that thing, let's start with the simplest thing. We need a little shadow around this uh, we use like I said we use the borders to compensate for that um, but let's see how we can actually do it so on this columns we have our advanced section and this is where we can use classes so obviously uh, you use classes to apply styles to things and in if you want to look up the documentation of Tailwind everything's there so if you want to look up shadows it'll show you how to no that's a drop shadow we want a box shadow um, box shadow right so we see okay well it's just a simple class and then you have sizes of it so let's throw this in and voila we have a shadow it's a little hard to see so let's make an extra large and now it's a little more obvious so it's that simple that's that's pretty powerful um, I think they're using maybe the large shadow. No, they're using just the main medium shadow here. It's pretty subtle. If we go here, we can actually see the uh, class they're using. So uh, it's just shadow here. They have an overflow hidden, and then they're using the um, rounded. 
They should have a rounded class somewhere here. Yes, rounded large. So let's throw these in just like that and see what we come out with. Okay, um, and let's see if I can fix that border issue now. So on this column, let's see if I can do like a um, negative, or you know what, maybe a better way of doing this here. There's a space on the x-axis utility there you get to see what it's doing here. So it's basically applying spacing only in between each element in its container. Now we can do the opposite where we actually do a negative value. Um, so if we do, let's see what Tailwind has right out of the box. I don't think they have a negative one value. Uh, spacing. Okay, I don't know, let's just play around with this. So let's do an arbitrary value of negative one pixel. There we go. Wow, that was easy. So you can see how powerful it is to uh, use classes like this in your blocks. Obviously, now that we're getting into specific classes, um, not every site uh, is going to have this plugin available to it. That's why we want to go as far as possible just with the native blocks. But then, you know, you can, you know, add a caveat to like, oh, well, you know, install Tailpress in order to um, apply these styles, these Tailwind styles to tweak it just right. Um, yeah, what else here? Uh, I mean, we can like do some text stuff. So uh, let's see what value they were using. It's a text red, 800, and a background of uh, 100. Okay, let's just steal this. Okay, but we want to actually apply that on our group. Uh, and it's so it's not actually overriding the styles. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll just do the text only. And uh, maybe this will be like a very light red hair, something like that. I'm okay with that. Okay, anyways, you get the idea. Um, so we got this like relatively close. Um, uh, I won't go into the responsive yet. There's uh, obviously things uh, or like stuff we can work on with the responsiveness of it. Um, I don't want to get too deep here. Uh, but suffice to say, yeah, I mean, look into the utility classes within uh, like the variants in uh, Tailwind. Because you have, you know, like, uh, here, you can have these um, prefixes to your classes to do certain things. So just as a really quick example, um, you know, uh, this column's doing some stuff uh, on mobile, mobile, so maybe, I don't know, uh, okay, just to give an example. Let's say it's a regular shadow, but then on uh, our medium resolution, we want a shadow large. Obviously, this is like kind of arbitrary, but it's just to give you an idea of like how you can do, how you can make up for the lack of responsive controls in the um, native blocks at this moment. Uh, I'm sure they're coming soon. In fact, they are. I've, I've seen it on the roadmap, but it's a little far out, further out than I'd like it to be. 
Um, so for now, you're going to have to fill the gap with these responsive classes. And so you can see how this works, right? It, we're going to go from a small shadow on this resolution to a larger shadow here. And so you can see, like, obviously, we can use the same mentality to fix some of these rounded corners and some of the spacing on this resolution and then have it uh, sort of uh, kick in at a larger resolution in a mobile first responsive manner. Uh, so yeah, that's more or less it. Um, we'll be making more of these patterns in a similar fashion. So, and we'll have, uh, as many of these blocks available to kind of copy paste into your, uh, as patterns into your WordPress sites. And that's that.